styles and today I'll give a bit more overview on some actionable tips you know that you can implement in your profile so without further ado I'll share my screen uh, let's see so you should be able to see my screen now uh, and let's start okay so First thing first, why is it important to keep your profile up to date? This may seem like a very obvious question. Yes, I see that many people actually uh, don't know why it's important. So first thing first, uh, it's your first contact with a client. Uh, it's always like this. And even if you're a very experienced uh, person, if you have all the skills, if you're a perfect uh, fit for a role, so uh, if someone sees your CV, a resume, or LinkedIn profile, you know, and it's incoherent, there are some mistakes, or something just doesn't sound good, this first impression is already negative, uh, which is a big loss for you. So the your freelance profile or even your CV is always a tool uh, with which you can set the tone for next steps and hopefully the prospective future work together. Uh, you can always present your expertise and tell your professional story through your profile. And it doesn't only mean that this will be for your future employer or a client. This can be uh, for a wider audience, for example, your colleagues, the organization you're working on, even code control as a community. You know, whenever you need to present yourself from your professional side, you can always use your profile. Uh, the third point is probably my favorite. Uh, you can always be ready for new opportunities. And the truth is, uh, most of the times when we really need our profile or CV, we're not uh, ready to send it over. We really need to make some changes and we're not anticipating this moment. So the key here is to keep your profile updated from time to time. You know, when you have new awards, new achievements, new projects, something new in your life and just add it to your profile, try to polish it from time to time. And as life is dynamic, so should be our uh, profile. And of course, uh, the fourth um, point is true for the freelancers and uh, you can showcase your freelance project. This is sometimes not, not possible with traditional CVs because usually if you have some short-term project, you would not like to put it there or this wouldn't fit or it would make your cv longer but for uh, digital profiles like code control profile or even linkedin this is uh, possible and i really encourage you to display and show your projects and passions uh, be it short term long term or anything that you found it yourself uh, always try to be confident about it and you know just show the world what you have done and as i mentioned before uh, I used to be an um, IT recruiter, so uh, here I would like to discuss a bit more, you know, what do clients actually look for in your CV or a profile. Uh, okay, so what do clients want to see? Uh, and these are very easy for bullet points, yet uh, many people really fail to address this. Uh, first of all, uh, who's going to see your profile? And this is a very crucial question. Many people think that the person looking at your profile would be directly the hiring manager or, you know, some team lead uh, with who you will be working on, someone working in your area. Uh, this is not always true. Uh, most of the times it might be um, an internal HR person, it can be external IT recruiter, it can be uh, anyone on the C-level, CEO, COO, uh, or even team lead, tech lead, anyone basically anyone and as we mentioned before it can also be like your prospective business partner or someone like a fellow colleague so you never know who exactly is gonna uh, come across your profile so here uh, it's really important to be coherent and really focus on your story it shouldn't be just plain facts it shouldn't be just plain bullet points or something uh some copied text let's say and uh, when I say coherent, uh, it really has to give a feeling for a reader, you know, that this is a story, that this is a wholesome story about one person, and it has to be authentic. If the resume or a profile is not about you, then what's the point of having it, right? Like as we said, it's a tool, you know, uh, it's a tool where you tell your story. So it has to be coherent and it has to be authentic. Uh, 
keywords, skills, and specific details. Many people try to avoid this, but this is especially true if you are trying to apply for a new position. Um, if HR or even the hiring manager, they have hundred CVs or hundred profiles at their desk, they're really just gonna search for specific keywords, specific skills. And if they don't see them, they're not gonna further you know, investigate on your profile. They just want to see detailed information. What are the keywords? For example, if we're talking about the um, IT field, you know, the keywords would be the technologies we use, would be the tech stack, any tools, you know, these are the first keywords that you get searched for in your profile. Uh, and specific de details, we'll talk about this uh, more later in the presentation, but still uh, specific details, it has to be about you, about the project, and always good to put some measurable data. Uh, of course, probably you have heard it before, but it can be quant quantitative, it can be qualitative, any data that gives the feeling of what you have done, what you have achieved, something specific. So the reader who is a stranger to you, they can actually get an understanding of what have you done, what have you achieved, and what is this all about, not just plain words, not just plain facts. And always important to show yourself as a professional. And at the end of the day, it's really about you. It's really about your professional career, about your growth. People really want to see, you know, how you um, came to where you are right now. Uh, what is your professional interest sometimes? You know, what is your values? What do you want to do as a professional? And this professional story, not personal, uh, is very important. This is, um, you know, uh, comes along with the authentic story that we just mentioned. And of course, the client wants to see how you can be a good fit. This is achieved with all the above bullet points. It's very important to showcase the keywords, the skills that you have, never forget them uh, about them. And you know, here the trick probably would be, uh, since I assume many people here are experts in their fields, um, always think uh, about your profile from recruiter or hiring manager point of view, you know, what would they like to see there? And honestly, um, you may think this is impossible, but actually uh, you as an expert in your field, you know better what a recruiter would like to see there. You know better, you know, your area of expertise, you know better, you know, all the technology that is used and you know better where you want to develop further. So for example, if the next position you want to get, you know, I don't know, like some front end engineer, right? And you think like, okay, what are the necessary skills to be a front end engineer and what like skills I already have? So you try to showcase them. You can showcase them in your most recent experience. You can always showcase them in the about me section. You can always highlight them and just make sure you keep this in mind. This type of thinking is really beneficial, you know, just to think like if I was a stranger, like what would I think about my CV? So um, for those of you who are part of code control community, you can now access your code control profile if you haven't done so. Uh, I'm sure most of you have, but uh, just as a note, you can always access it by going to community.codecontrol.io and signing in uh, with your email and then opening your profile. Uh, now I'm going to give some actionable steps to improve your profile. So it's good to just take a look at your profile right now. And if you have any questions, um, just shoot. Uh, okay. So let's go to some action. First and foremost, I always suggest to start with the most recent experience. And here we're talking about the profile, um, improving the profile, you know, because I really think that most of us here already have some profile, already have some CV, resume, anything. And here we're just trying to improve it further on. Uh, I'll give some examples that would be specific for uh, code control profiles, yet uh, they're really much applicable to LinkedIn profiles and sometimes to the CVs as well. So if you have specific question about one of the formats, you can always ask as well. So what do we do with our most recent experience and why do I suggest to start with this? Uh, usually our most recent experience is the best indication of what we're really interested in right now, what we're uh, looking for and what we like doing, you know, and it really has to have a lot of full detailed information for a reader to get an understanding of what you are doing at the moment. 
because usually a person reading your profile, they are not going to start uh, looking, you know, what did you do 10 years ago? They would be more interested. What are you involved in right now? Who is the person behind this resume right now? So here, one of the methods I really suggest using is called CAR or STAR. Uh, there are really uh, many names for this method. Um, CAR is challenge action result and STAR is uh, situation task action result. So they're very similar in the context and there are many other names for this method. You might've heard of it if you've been through interviews, then you've been suggested you know, to use the STAR method. If you haven't, just Google the STAR interviewing techniques. They are very um, useful when you go for interviews or you would like to tell your story, do an elevator pitch. Uh, so we're talking about challenge action result, and we try to display this through our experience, through our project. How do we portray this? Well, this is really easy. Actually, the challenge, we have to describe some uh, particular challenge that we've been facing. Uh, and how can we do this in the terms of a profile? Uh, usually, I suggest to describe the project that you landed. Uh, this is especially true for freelancers. Usually, if you were hired for a specific project uh, with specific tasks, you already have your challenge uh, part done. Uh, you know what you had to do. There are specific you know, action items that you were given. Uh, so just first try to describe the company try to describe the project. The project usually is the challenge for the freelancers and sometimes give a context for the team if this is applicable, if you were part of the team, if you are leading the team, how many people were in your team, what kind of team you were part of and stuff like this. Um, so for example, your company is um, early stage you, and you can say like this company, uh, early stage startup, you know, we are developing this in this kind of product and I was hired for a project to do, to develop an app for iOS, you know, I was part of the mobile development uh, team and I led five uh, developers. Um, something like this that just gives a context of what you have been doing, what uh, was the context of your job, what was the company and the project itself. Because usually, unless your company is some uh, very widely known company, uh, people wouldn't really understand what you did there, what was the context of your job. And even if your company is really widely known, uh, then it's not really, um, it's not really clear what was the project about. So just always try to give a couple sentences um, overview of what it was about and what you were hired to do. So this is usually the challenge part that we try to describe. And then, uh, of course, um, list some bullet points. I advise to keep it, you know, up to six. Don't make it too long. Otherwise, you know, there is always the risk that the person wouldn't read it. So we try to list our top achievements using action verbs in a bullet point format. Uh, it's very important here that this has to be top achievement, so we really have to prioritize the information. Uh, so we wouldn't put here, you know, our daily tasks or any information, you know, like just 10 sentences, no one is going to read it. It has to be something we're proud of, something we have achieved, some actions and results that uh, were done, like some solutions you provided for your project and uh, hopefully the impact that it had on the organization or the project or the team. And here we try to use the action verbs. I'll mention a bit more in the next slide, but um, action verbs are really easy and really helpful. You can always Google, you know, action verbs for developers or action verbs for any profession you have. And they're always like these classifications of like uh, thousand plus action verbs, like a uh, hundred most common action verbs, something like this. So this information is widely available and it really makes a lot of difference, you know, uh, if you say, for example, um, like I had daily meetings with my team uh, and you can say like, uh, led daily meetings with my team uh, in order to uh, enhance the team engagement by 50%, something like this. Like even just saying that you lead this um, uh, call, if you manage something, if you implemented, built, developed, uh, all these kind of action verbs, they give better understanding and they really portray that you did something with the challenge that you are given. 
and which led to a certain result. So this is really uh, understandable for a reader and it really um, uh, shows you from a good side. And here always uh, important for developers, especially uh, not to forget to put the technology you've been using and the tools. Uh, so this is pretty obvious, just don't forget to uh, put them and don't think that uh, it's obvious that you use particular technology at a particular position. Uh, it's not. And as we mentioned before, people will be searching for keywords and if they don't find them, they think you don't have this particular skill. So just don't forget about that and uh, keep it concise and detailed. So make sure it's not too long, make sure a person uh, you know, would be able to read it and they don't have to take breaks to read it and keep it detailed. No need to put your everyday tasks into it because, you know, anyone knows what you probably have been doing, but it's more interesting to really see what were your achievements at a particular job or project. So talking more about the action verbs, um, here is a very good formula, uh, how we list this bullet point. We put an action verb plus project plus result and ta-da, there is our accomplishment. Uh, this is also a very wi widely known uh, formula and there are different variations of it. Sometimes uh, the project uh, is replaced with context, sometimes with a problem, but it's also like the same idea behind it. Uh, it's also referred to, I think, Princeton formula but sometimes even Princeton uh, Career Services, they refer to it as ACE, uh, which is action, context, and end result. So basically the same idea. And here I just found a couple examples that we can go through. Um, and first thing first, you always see people use the action verbs and it really makes it actually easier to read. So for example, here I designed a more efficient database system that reduced reporting, by 60, reporting errors by 60%. So this is very neat, very short. It gives you an idea what the person did. It gives you an idea of the context and gives you an idea of the results. So reduce the reporting errors by 60%. And uh, please don't forget to uh, put you know, the context because for example, if here we cut off this part, which is the context, uh, it would just be like reduced reporting errors by 60%. And I've seen this on profiles and this, doesn't really look good. It doesn't show like what you have done. It's good that you reduce the reporting errors, but it's not really clear what was your input there, you know? Uh, so always important to follow, so to say the formula um, and, you know, to give some context to what you have done. Um, let's look at the next example. Hire and train 12 new team members to grow the development team three times. Uh, also, very common example here, we try to give more details because here the person could have said just hired and trained new team members, you know, but it's more understandable and readable when you say like 12 new members. So a person kind of gets an idea how was the team before, you know, uh, what happened next? 12 new team members sounds cool, you know, like, I mean, it really gives some context and essentially like what happened after that, you grew the development team three times. This is, wow, the accomplishment. And uh, next example, I extended the product life of an old legacy product by two years through service enhancement that generated additional 2 million uh, revenue. So here is important to mention that when we talk about the results, uh, very nice to talk about it in some measurable terms. So for example, in all these uh, examples, we can see there is a percentage, there are numbers, there is a revenue. So we can talk about it uh, through time, resources, money, uh, and any other metrics that you use at your work. It's very beneficial, yet I know sometimes it's not possible, you know, to put numbers and no need, you know, to um, just to try to put numbers everywhere or some metrics. Sometimes it really doesn't look natural. It looks a bit off, you know, and you know when it is off. Uh, so just to try to give at least some understanding what uh, was the impact, what improved, what grew, you know, um, anything that showcases that your actions actually had results, actually had some impact on the company, this is already valuable. Okay, so next step, 
after we're done with our first um, and most recent experience, we work our way down in the experiences. And um, I always do this because, as I said, like it's important to pay the most attention to something that was most recent. And when we work our uh, way down, uh, I always encourage to pay most attention to, again, the recent and the longest project. Because why do I say the longest one? Because um, sometimes people say that they worked at a particular project for three years and they don't give any details or achievements or anything, no context at all. And this leaves a person reading your profile or CV questioning, you know, what have you done there? What happened there? You know, did you even have this job? Because why then don't you put anything there? And this is really not a good impression. Um, it keeps a person questioning and hungry for more, but not in a good way. Like sometimes you may get an interview after this, but sometimes uh, a person will be like, okay, this is incoherent. I can't read this anymore. Not interested. So uh, always try to describe in most detail your most recent experience and the longest project you worked on. And uh, I really encourage you to do so because I'm sure you have a lot to say about those projects. And especially for freelancers, um, you are passionate about some of them, like really show your passion, like show your confidence to what you write. And we apply similar method to all of these um, experiences projects. So as I said, we follow this CAR method uh, where we describe the challenge and then we write the actions and results. Um, and we try to display our seniority along the way. This is also important, especially for freelancers. Uh, if you, if your position was uh, more senior at um, some point, you can say, for example, like senior mobile developer, sometimes you are lead mobile developer, or sometimes you are even like the team lead. So please don't uh, forget to include this. This is important. It also gives the context of what you can do, what is your expertise, uh, especially um, now, oftentimes I see that people forget to mention that they lead teams. And I think this is like very important to mention because I mean, not everyone gets to be the team, not everyone gets to be a senior developer and it's something to be proud of. And I don't see why you wouldn't put it on your profile. Uh, and a very important part is to check for gaps and time inconsistencies. Um, it's, really unclear sometimes when a person says that he or she is currently working at five different places. If there is not enough context given, this will look like it's inconsistent CV that the person forgot to update it. Or on the other hand, if there is like a three years gap in between, it's also very unclear what has been happening with you. There is no problem, you know, if uh, you are on some leave, sabbatical or something of the sort, but just try to give you know a um, better overview of this, especially in about me section, or at, or at least make sure you don't forget some of your projects. And very important part, uh, try to list all your projects and avoid combining them together. Here I gave a, a picture a example, you know, of what you should try not to do. Uh, and I think it's very important to try to list it at least most of your projects, if not all, and try not to combine them together. So here in this particular example, I took a screenshot and this is a person who says they joined the code control community as a freelance mobile developer, which is great, but this person wasn't working specifically for code control. Uh, rather it would be like uh, got projects via code control, uh, which is always great to mention, but you really have to give, um, you know, the clear context for this. And it says this person worked there for five years and just has one sentence. This is really not valuable information. Uh, if you have this in your profile, you might as well just delete this part. Uh, so here, uh, if this person really has been working for five years, what are the projects they worked on? What are the clients? And I would really encourage here, you know, to just show at least couple most important or most valuable or the longest project, uh, instead of just saying, you know, you worked as a freelancer for five years or and not give any context. 
Um, so yeah, avoid combining them together. Really, really try to separate them. Even if they are sometimes like two months, three months, you know, you, you think they're short, but um, they're always like, there was always a challenge that you solved. You provided a solution and this is valuable. So try to showcase, you know, your achievements through this. And moving on, uh, include your skills. This is easy. I don't see why you wouldn't do this. So highlight the technology you love in your core skills. Here I gave an example of how this looks on the code control profile. Uh, please uh, really include the technology only if you really know your way around. I'm sure most of you do that, but I still felt like um, mentioning it. Uh, if um, you used this technology 10 years ago and you don't really remember how to use it, or if a friend showed you, like how to play with it. It's not really a technology you would like to put on your profile, be it CV or freelancer profile. Um, it's not valuable information. And always try to highlight the core skills. The core skills are the ones that you've been working with uh, most recently, or um, you like them the most, or you've been working with them the longest. For example, in this example, it would be the iOS development, objective C, like nine years of experience. These are the core skills. And uh, don't forget to include your soft and hard skills, especially if you have them, that's great. Uh, so something along the lines of agile methodology, software development, leadership, this kind of skills, they're always uh, important to include, uh, especially as we said, uh, they are very um, common keywords. So when someone looks at your profile and they search for leadership and they don't find it, it doesn't mean that you don't have leadership skills, yet it's not there. So, uh, you know, it really depends on the person who is looking at your profile, if they have more time to uh, search for it manually or they're just gonna close your profile. And as I mentioned before, I don't think that it's obvious you have certain skills, it's usually not. And for people who are not coming from the same area of expertise as yours, who are not developers, who are not, uh, you know, in IT, it's always hard to understand, you know, what would be a particular technology you would use at a certain position. So just be nice and put it there. I think it's uh, really valuable for you and for the people, you know, on the other side. And the next step. Also, fill out your education. This is very obvious, very easy, yet not everyone does it. And I don't see why you wouldn't do it. If you have a degree, show it. Be proud of it. Show it. List it. You know, uh, it's great. Like, it's great to list all your relevant certifications. It really shows that you are continuously developing, continuously growing uh, in your area of expertise. It is really valuable. And... Uh, Make sure you list it correctly, be precise and clear on what is what. Sometimes people don't show that uh, they have master's degree if something is like working towards PhD or it's a certification or just some postgraduate um, kind of uh, certification. Like just give context to it. Um, you know, in the most of the profiles, you have to list the location, list the year when you got the uh, certification. So it's really easy to do. It doesn't take much time from you and it looks great. And actually many times uh, people would be looking, you know, if you have some relevant certifications, it really justifies your expertise. And um, if here's a tip, if you're switching like your fields or you're trying to tap into some new industry and you have relevant uh, certification for that specific industry, uh, don't you know, don't be shy to showcase it uh, for a person who will be hiring you next. This will be really valuable information. And my favorite part, uh, least but not uh, last but not least, make sure to update your about me section. Many people update it once in 10 years and they forget about it for good. Don't do this. Uh, this is the heart of your profile, of your CV. Um, depending on the format, it will be different, but I, here I highlighted like five things that you shouldn't forget. So first of all, introduce yourself as an expert. This is why you have about me section. It's your introduction to a person reading your profile for the first time. Um, here it's important to remember that your about me section has to be coherent uh, on its own. 
So for example, if you refer to some places, projects, people or something uh, that is very specific and a stranger wouldn't know what it's about, make sure you give context. Uh, not everyone is going to read your about me section, read about some projects and then, you know, like uh, look at the project sections and try to find it and, you know, uh, understand what you're talking about. Make it really clear, make it stand out on its own and make sure you really uh, highlight your expertise, your experience and achievements. So it's good to say, you know, what you're expert in, what are your top achievements in this field and always talk about your professional interests. Uh, I really notice people don't do this, but it's very valuable for a person looking at your, who is looking at your profile to see what are your uh, interests, what you specialize in, what would you like to achieve in this industry, you know, your passions, your values. And if you're really passionate about what you do, why not put it there? And um, this is like a bit of bonus. Where do you see yourself next? If you're looking for uh, a new gig, a new opportunity, it's good to include what industry you're interested in, uh, what projects you would like to work on and something of the sort. Or even if you're looking for a business partner, why not to include it there? And of course, uh, don't forget links and photo. This is easy, so do it. Uh, very uh, professional photo link to your LinkedIn or link to your personal website or GitHub. It's always appreciated. And here I have an example. Actually, Dmitri, I, I think I saw him on the call. So surprised. <laughs> I really like your profile. So I selected it uh, to showcase today. Um, and we're going to look at his About Me section here. We work together with uh, Dmitri to update it. And it looks very nice. Uh, so uh, what he does well here. First of all, he showcases his uh, experience. He introduces himself as a product manager. He has been doing it for five years. He uh, gives the context that he has been working for startups like Financip and even like big corporations as Deutsche Bank. And he lists his interests, that he's interested in financial industry, um, front-end facing projects. And uh, he shows what he has been doing in last two years. This is great. So at least this really shows that he has updated it recently. And even if I didn't know he did, I would get such feeling. And it says currently he's also mentoring junior product owners. Owners, Great, if you're mentoring someone, if you're leading teams, if you have some leadership experience, always try to showcase it in your about me section. It really strengthens, strengthens your profile. It shows your expertise and it just shows you as a nice person. And uh, here he also, in the second paragraph, he says, what are his values, uh, what he does. And, you know, he says he builds beautiful products that users love fast and on time. This is very short, very sweet, and really um, gives a context about who he is. Uh, and here he also describes um, the current project he is working on, which is his uh, personal pro project. He's a founder. And um, here we worked a bit to show, you know, the mission of this project. So here he's giving back to his hometown and uh, making people proud of Riga, where he's uh, from. And uh, the last sentence is my favorite. He's open, especially to FinTech related projects. So if you are available, and as you see, Dmitri is fully available right now, uh, always say like you are open, especially to some uh, specific project, you like some specific tech stack, and anything that you value like at your job, why not to share it there? So a person who is uh, looking for a specific set of skills, specific set of interests, they would know that you're actually the go-to person. You're the person who has this much years of experience and expertise in this specific, um, you know, specialty, in this specific tech stack. And this just gives a lot of context. And try to make it short. Here we have two paragraphs. Uh, not too hard to read, uh, even people with very, very um, short attention span, I think they can go through it, uh, and just very friendly. Uh, so um, now that we went through five steps, and I'll remind you again, so first we go to your uh, most recent experience, we apply the uh, challenge action result methodology there, 
then we work our way down on all the projects you have done. We try to uh, not combine them together. We try to list everything we worked on. Uh, always use bullet points and action verbs. Then uh, we go on to skills. We uh, try to highlight the core skills and uh, the other skills as well. Don't forget to put uh, some skills that you are experts in. And uh, we put the education. Yay, if you have a degree, please show it. And uh, of course, my favorite part, we update the about me section. Be honest there, be coherent, tell your story, be authentic. And now we read it all again. So what's important here? It's actually very important to read it all again. Uh, you may spend hours working on it. Yes, take a break, come back to it again and read it all again. Just understand how it sounds. Fix the typos and mistakes. If you have some grammar mistakes, if you have some inconsistencies in your story, for example, um, you say that you worked at some place for five years, but then you refer to this project and say you worked there for seven years. It's just creating a mess in a reader's head and this is unnecessary. It really leaves a person with a bad impression. They don't understand what's happening. Just make it really consistent. If you refer to yourself in third person everywhere, like he or she, try to do it everywhere. Don't, no need to jump from first person to uh, third person. No need to, uh, you know, not to be honest about some things like, and try not to copy paste some text from one uh, section to another. If you have, um, you know, things that um, the reader sees twice, it's not really going to emphasize on it, yet it's going to confuse the reader once again. And pay attention to the tone and how you talk about yourself. Try to be confident. Try to really showcase your achievements. As we said uh, in the beginning, this is a tool where you showcase yourself, like your expertise to um, the other person on the other side, it can be a client, it can be like your colleagues, it can be anyone. So here, when we're telling our professional story, make sure you're really confident, you know what you're doing, be detailed, show, you know, be honest, be coherent and be authentic. And um, sometimes uh, there is this uh, trick that you give your CV or a profile to read to, to a stranger or to a friend. Um, if you don't have such opportunity, just Think as a stranger, you know, don't look at your profile for a couple of hours, come back to it, look at it and see if, you know, you can actually read it and understand who is the person behind it. And once again, be proud of your achievements. Don't be shy to showcase them. Um, this is really the place to showcase your achievements. So just do it. And of course, if you have more questions, uh, we can address them together. If you want to improve your profile together, uh, just reach out to me, we can uh, schedule a session, we can have a call and just talk through your profile. I can also give you a written feedback, verbal feedback, whatever you prefer, and we can work together to improve your profile. Uh, here I put my Calendly link, you can just directly go there, uh, schedule a call, or reach out to me on Slack, we can chat, and here's my email. So I hope this was helpful. And I hope you implement some of the steps I've mentioned. Uh, even if you can't implement all of those, just start with your recent experience, work a bit on it, you know, and update it bit by bit. This is also valuable in long term. Uh, so I hope this was useful. This was my first uh, um, experience leading a lunch and learn event. So I'm really excited and happy I'm done. <laughs> So if you have any questions, I would be glad to answer, or if not now, you can always reach out to me on Slack or email. Thank you.